There is a reason why the Prophet ﷺ observed all ten of the last ten nights, even though we know that Laylatul Qadr falls on one of the odd nights. For one, we really do not know which night it's going to be this year. And we don't know which of the nights are truly odd, and therefore it is important inshallah ta'ala for us to observe every single one of these nights until the end of Ramadan. Imagine if you missed Laylatul Qadr because your odds were off or your evens were off. And then you show up on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and you say, I followed the wrong moon sighting calculation or the wrong opinion or whatever it is. Observe each and every single one of these last 10 nights because you don't know where that treasure is. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, today we released at Yaqeen Institute for Islamic Research an article that I co-authored with Sheikh Ibrahim Hindi and Dr. Nazar Khan on the theological significance of Laylatul Qadr. There's a lot to unpack about the beautiful night itself. For one, how is it that it's the night of decree? Aren't our deeds already decreed or aren't our lives and all of these things already decreed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah al-Mahfuz, in the preserved tablet? Yes. But on this particular night, on Laylatul Qadr, when it takes place, and we know that it will take place sometime in these last 10 nights, and this particular night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for your decree to be downloaded. Let's use terminology that we can understand. For the year to come, from al al-Mahfud, from the preserved tablet, into the records of the angels. And those records contain everything that will happen for the next year, including, by the way, those who will go to Hajj. So if you want to make the intention for Hajj this year, now is the time. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write it down for us. An accepted Hajj bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. This is the time for you to start planning inshaAllah. And you really want to be found in a state of observance on these nights. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you in a state worthy of good. And the Prophet sallallahu said, nothing prolongs a person's life like charity and dua. Okay, like charity and dua. So good deeds and supplication and charity actually prolong one's life. So it may be that in these decrees that come down in the records of the angels, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means when He says, Yamhu Allahu ma yasha, Allah erases what He wills and confirms that what is in the record of the angels will take into consideration what Allah knows of you to come for the next year. And so something might change because of how Allah sees you in that observant state. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let our qadr, let our decree be good. And it is always good for the believer because if he is struck with something that is apparently good, then he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of gratitude. And if he is faced with something that is apparently bad, then he, thinks, then he is patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it still becomes a means of elevation for him. Dear brothers and sisters, what are there some, some things for us to do? I just want to kind of go over these last 10, inshallah ta'ala, and just some important tips for us to take into consideration. There's really a beautiful statement from an Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala that I came across, and it's actually within the article I wrote about this statement in particular, that I find very powerful. I remember the first time, you know, when, when I went to Hajj, and there were some people in Arafah, and there was a brother that was reading Qur'an, and someone went up to him and yelled at him and told him, Arafah is time for dua, not a time for reading Qur'an. And I thought to myself, well, okay, Arafah is a time for dua. Arafah is specified as a time for dua. And the Prophet ﷺ used to raise his hands from the beginning of Dhuhr all the way until uh, the sunset, right? It's supposed to be a day of dua. But then I came across narrations of some of the Salaf taking breaks from their dua and reading Qur'an. And I thought to myself, subhanAllah. So did it lose its quality of dua, that the main act of worship should be dua? Or is the point of Arafah and the point of those specified times that you stay engaged in worship, even if you're going to break away for a moment from dua or from some time from dua? How does this relate to Laylatul Qadr, these last 10 nights? They are nights of standing in prayer. They are nights of supplication. And certainly the best thing that you can do is to stand in prayer and to enjoy as much of salah as you possibly can in these last 10 nights. But Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah said something very beautiful. 
He said that the way that Laylatul Qadr started was with a word to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iqra, read, right? So the very first command of Laylatul Qadr to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was read. And the end of that surah is what? The end of that, that chapter which was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which commenced revelation on Laylatul Qadr. What's the end of the cha- what is the end of the surah? Wasjud waqtarib. Prostrate and come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do sujood and come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Shafi'i rahimahullah, he said, so the night of Laylatul Qadr should be spent with everything from iqra to wasjud waqtarib. Reading, prayer, prostrating, and coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything in between. Meaning what? If you need to switch to different types of ibadah, have a healthy diversity of the types of good deeds that you're going to be doing in these tonight's. The point is stay engaged. So switch from reading Quran to making dua, to standing up and praying, to listening to the lecture, enjoying the halaqa and reflecting, to some time where you just sit and you do tasbih and dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But everything should be within those bounds of iqra to wasjud waqtarib. Reading and engaging in that dua and engaging in that uh, act of worship to the ultimate act of worship which is to prostrate and to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so all of these good deeds are fine and you want to also be very careful and understand that what you really don't want to do on Laylatul Qadr is let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find you in a state of disobedience all right so an Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala pointed out as many of the scholars did that in times in which good deeds are multiplied, the severity of sins is also compounded. Because it's like you're turning away from an opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a time where you should be doing good. Imagine, Ramadan, the shayateen are locked away, and then now the angels are descending in these last ten in particular, to where they are like the pebbles on the earth, more plentiful than the pebbles on the earth, and you still find a way to be satanic. You still find a way to display behavior that's pleasing to the shayateen rather than all of these angels that are surrounding and descending. You still find a way to cancel that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming upon you. So watch yourself. Watch yourself in these particular last 10 nights. Don't get caught in iftar because the night begins at maghrib by the way. Don't get caught in iftar over a conversation or suhoor or something else, backbiting or saying something that you really don't need to be saying and canceling the blessings of that night. So that's the first thing is watch yourself. Diversify your good deeds and then watch yourself from any sin. Because if there are any times to watch yourself, it's now. In these particular last 10 nights and you've had the preparation of Ramadan. Engaging in dua, we know that the supplication that the Prophet ﷺ recommended is what? Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Or Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you love to forgive. You are al-afu. You are the one who forgives. You are generous and benevolent. You love to forgive, so forgive me. This is the most beloved dua. Just like in Arafah, the Prophet ﷺ said the best dua is La ilaha, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The Prophet ﷺ gave a line because it's a long period of time. So when you find yourself blanking and trying to think of the next dua or trying to connect or walking, then go ahead and repeat that dhikr. So repeat that dua. So in times when you're transitioning, that's the best dua for you to repeat, but don't only treat it like a transition because it is the most special dua that you could make. And just like the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the best dhikr in Arafah is everything that comes around La ilaha illallah, is the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best du'as on Laylatul Qadr are the ones that entail forgiveness. Because there is nothing in the decree that is more precious to you that you should be seeking than the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's also good if you want to have some other good deeds that you do in these last ten. Don't overlook kindness and generosity as you're uh, walking into people, bumping into people. By the way, the night of Qadr was lost. The day was lost because of what? An argument. We lost the day because of an argument. So how would it look if on Laylatul Qadr you got into a fight with someone in the masjid? Because you said, go over there and don't pray here and do this and handle your kids and then... Of course, security has to do that, so they, but they do it in a kind way, inshallah ta'ala. But how, how 
bad is it if that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you on that night? The night was lost because of arguing. So don't be one of those people that lets their ego get in the way and gets into an argument with someone over something silly. It would be better for you to be patient when something distracts you and maintain the blessing of your night. And in fact, seek, seek the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your patience than to blow up on somebody because you want to read Quran and do dhikr. Because by the time you get back to your Quran and dhikr, you would have lost everything in the first place. So be patient with people and show generosity and smile at people as you walk and as you encounter people. Give salam. And if you can even uh, respond and give sadaqah, inshallah ta'ala, of course, we will provide you. And I'm not going to say that I know Laylatul Qadr is Friday night for the VRIC fundraiser, but there's a chance. There's a chance it might be Friday night. So inshallah ta'ala, exert yourself in charity as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to find that night and to be accepted on that night. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and allow all of our sins to be taken away from us and all of our good deeds in this month and beyond to be accepted. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khair.